Before we launch into the new material, Cisco asked me to review some of the keys about that uh, command line. So let's go on a command line review here when it comes to our Cisco devices. We remember that loaded onto these devices is an iOS user interface, an inner network operating system user interface. We're going to use uh, a terminal emulation application. You can pick your favorite. Maybe it's the hyper terminal that's built right into Windows. Maybe it's the free putty utility. Maybe it's the free TerraTerm utility. Maybe it's the relatively expensive secure CRT application. Whatever you want to use, you're going to use that app to connect to your Cisco device and you're going to enter in commands on the device through this, what we call command line interface. And this is what you're going to use to configure the particular device. Now, one of the cool things about this CLI is that we can actually prepare the commands and save them in a notepad and literally paste them into this user interface. And something else that we love about the user interface is that it's intelligent. In other words, there is context sensitive error messaging and context sensitive help built right into the operating system. So it'll typically help bail us out of problems that we find ourselves getting into when we're in there interacting with the devices. One of the things that you see on this particular slide is mention of the fact that the iOS, the operating system CLI, is hierarchical. Big fancy word. What does that mean? Well, in this case, it means that we're going to be operating in different modes. For instance, we are initially logging into the device and we are in what is called user mode. Remember user mode has that greater than symbol? In that user mode, we exit that and go into global configuration, uh, privilege mode, excuse me. We exit user mode and go into privilege mode using the command enable. Then from privilege mode, we go into global configuration mode using the command configure terminal. And then we go from global configuration mode into interface configuration mode by specifying an interface reference. So we go into these various stages of the command line interface. It is, to use Cisco's term, it is hierarchical in nature. Now notice that the device is smart about telling us we are in a particular mode. Pretty cool. Let's see this at an actual device. So as we move from mode to mode, like configure terminal, now we can see the config in parentheses to remind us we're in global configuration mode. And then I say like interface FA0 slash one. Now we can see the config if in parentheses to remind us that we're in interface configuration mode. And then I say like line console zero and it says config line to remind us that we are in line configuration mode. As you go deep into these configuration modes, we can back out of them one step at a time by saying exit, or you can back out very quickly by saying end. Another option for getting out of the modes is control Z, which will give you the equivalent of the end command. So there is this hierarchy within the command line interface. And sure enough, the commands that you can issue when you are in a particular mode 
is going to vary from mode to mode. So what you're able to do, what you're able to configure, that is going to vary as we move from mode to mode. Now, the Beatles recorded a very popular song called Help, and it's good to know that our routers and switches and other Cisco devices are all going to be built in such a manner to give us help when we need it. Here to tell us more about the help system that we're going to find on our Cisco devices is our own guest expert, one of our guest experts that we'll have in this course, he is a dual CCIE, so he not only has one CCIE like myself in routing and switching, he also possesses a CCIE in the area of security. His name is Ed Yanez, and Ed's going to tell us more right now about this built-in help system. Help facilities of the Cisco IOS CLI. Let's take a look at the help facilities of the Catalyst 1900 switch. You need help, believe me, because of the sheer number of features and commands used to configure them. First, there's context sensitive help. This command or this feature provides a list of commands and arguments associated with a specific command. This feature will help you configure a technology by giving you syntax of the next command when you press a question mark. There are console error messages. These are messages the switch gives you to help you identify problems with the CLI command you entered. For example, if you did not enter the proper syntax, the console error message will tell you about it and give you a pointer on where you went wrong. There's the command history buffer. This command allows you to view any of the previous commands you entered to a maximum limit. For example, if you have a long show command that scrolls off the screen, you don't want to type it all over again, do you? No, so you access the history buffer using the up arrow and press enter to repeat the command again. Well, great stuff. Thanks so much, Ed. So we've got a very robust help system at work here, uh, literally context sensitive, and it's combined with those great error messages and things of that nature so that as we are working with the operating system, it's going to really try and do its best to help us out. Let me, let me demonstrate this, for instance. Here I am on this switch, and I say configure terminal, and I say service password encryption. And I'm doing this wrong, as many of you can see. And I, I hit enter, and it says, hey, look, you've made a mistake. And you've not only made a mistake, but you made the mistake right there at the E in encryption. Look at that. Look at how clever it is. It's telling us right exactly where we went wrong in this command. And now I look and go, oh, yeah, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Cisco Switch. I now remember it's service password hyphen encryption. So it's really, really a sophisticated command line environment, much more sophisticated than something like the disk operating system, DOS command line. So pretty, pretty clever how it's going to help us out. Now, what are the various commands that we should know right off the top of our head? And in what mode would we execute those commands? Well, that's a very, very valid question. And what I want to do right now is go on a little tour of the commands that we should know right off of the top of our head when it comes to these particular devices. So let's take a look at that right now. I just got a little lost here. Where are we? Here we go. Okay, banner message of the day. Do you remember this one from ICND1 Materials? The banner message of the day is that message that you can configure to display to individuals as they log in to your Cisco device. Using any particular methodology of login, they will see this message of the day and you might warn them about trespassing into the device or you might warn them about, maybe it's a message about some particular outage that your network is experiencing that's a planned outage. So the banner message of the day, remember that one. And that's in global configuration mode. Erase 
startup hyphen configuration. Wow. Yeah, this is when we want to go ahead and we want to take the saved configuration of the device and trash it. Yeah, erase it. So we're essentially, it sounds to me like we want to get the system back to factory defaults. We could erase the startup configuration, reload the device, and we're back at the factory defaults. Line console zero. Line console zero is how we're going to go into the console port in order to configure that console port, right? So we go in there to configure it, and this is the port that we connect to with a local computer in order to configure the device initially. Show CDP neighbors. This is how we can discover what devices that we are neighboring with in the Cisco infrastructure. Shutdown, no shutdown. We can issue under an interface to administratively bring it up or administratively bring it down. Configure terminal, we've seen already in the class, this is how we are going to enter the global configuration mode in order to make changes that are going to globally affect the device. A great example of this is to go in, let me, let me uh, show you how we go in again. Configure, whoops, configure terminal gets us in that global configuration mode. And then one of the things we desperately need to do on this switch is give it a name. This is our switch one device. So we issue the host name command in global configuration mode in order to give the switch its name. Notice changing its name is certainly something that's globally impacting that particular device. So sure enough, uh, it's global configuration mode that we need to be in there. All right, what else? What other commands should we know? Well, right on cue, there's the hostname command that we just demonstrated. The hostname command, as we said, will be used to give the device a name that we can use to easily recognize that network device in the infrastructure. Line VTY 0 through 4. Here's our virtual terminal lines. This is how we enter the virtual terminal lines, and this is how we control things like Telnet and SSH access into the device. We've got show interface. Show interface is an excellent verification command when we want to see the status of an interface right down to how many bytes have been sent and received on the particular interface. So here in the switch, I can say show interface fast ethernet zero slash 23. Uh, and this is driving me crazy. You see what's happening here? The, the operating system keeps interrupting my typing with its messages. Yeesh, we wanna get rid of that. So how we get rid of that, you probably remember this from ICND1, is we go into global configuration mode, then into console configuration mode, and we say logging synchronous. This is one of the first things that I do on my Cisco device at the CLI so that it doesn't drive me insane. So that we go in and we get rid of the operating system's ability to interrupt our typing like that, okay? So, whew, logging synchronous, something that we definitely want to do right away. Okay, so what I was going to show you was show interface FA0 slash 1, for instance, and here we get all of this very, very important information about the health and the utilization of this particular interface. Right up here, we can see, uh-oh, Fast Ethernet 0 slash 1 is down and its line protocol is down because it's not connected to anything. Yep, it's not connected to anything. So sure enough, we're not going to be sending and receiving a bunch of traffic. It's really interesting. At one point, this was connected to something because over five minutes, we have sent and received packets. Pretty cool. 
but right now, at this very moment, we don't have it connected to anything. Pretty cool. What other commands should we know intimately from our ICND1 class? How about switch port mode access? Yeah, this would be done on one of our switches, and this is to make it a access port where a workstation would plug in in order to access the network. There's copy running hyphen config to startup hyphen config. This is how we save our configuration, isn't it? We're going to take that configuration that is in RAM in the running configuration and tuck it into the non-volatile RAM, the startup configuration. Yeah, pretty cool. So take the configuration in RAM and tuck it into the non-volatile RAM so that it can be used when the device is restarted. How about entering an interface? Yeah, we've already seen that. We're going to type interface and then the name of the interface. Don't type interface interface like you see here <laughs> because that'll just return an error. It's interface and then, of course, the name of the interface. The login command. The login command is one of those deceptive ones, isn't it? The login command says, you know what? I want you to check the password that we set at login. Let me show you. Let's go up to our switch and let's go in there and say, okay, for the line console, we want to set a password and we want that password checked at login. So yeah, that's what the login command is all about. It's saying when someone logs in, have them have to provide the password. You see, if you were to say no login, a lot of people interpret that like, oh, I'm making it so that no one can log into the console port. No, what you're saying is they can log in and there'll be no password checked. Let's, let's prove this. I'm going to exit and now I'm going to press return to get started and look at that, we get right in. So no login is going to prevent the password from being checked that we set at login of the console port. Show port security. Uh, we learned in the ICND1 class, we learned about port security. Port security is that really cool security that we can do at layer two on our switch ports to lock them down to a particular MAC address. In order to verify that security configuration, we can go ahead and utilize the show port security command. What else? Uh, switch port port security would be the command we would use to set that feature. There's the enable command. That's how we go from that user mode to privilege mode. There's the IP address command. That's how we set an IP address on one of our devices. And then there's the password command like you saw us utilizing in the examples here. Show running config shows us that configuration in the RAM on the system. Switch port port security MAC address MAC. This is how we uh, set a MAC address statically under port security. Enable secret password. Yeah, this is setting a encrypted password on the privilege mode access of the device. IP default gateway address. This is how we would tell a switch of its default gateway. Yeah, of the router, the local router that can help the switch get off of its network. I suppose we'll go ahead and demonstrate this one over on switch one while we're at it. We'll say IP default gateway, and then we will input the address of the system that will be used as the default gateway. Why are we doing that IP default gateway address command? Why are we doing that on the switch? Well, it's so that 
when someone, an administrator comes into the switch from some faraway network in order to administer it, it's so the switch can communicate back to the far off administrator. Yeah. So I want to repeat that. It's a very important point. We put the default gateway onto the Cisco switch so that the switch can communicate with an administrator that is on a remote subnet that's coming in to manage that device. Yeah, very, very important point. So IP default gateway and then the address of the default gateway. What else? Reload. Ah, yeah. When you have your configuration just the way you want it, uh, you end and you save your configuration, copy run star, and then thanks to the saving, it would be safe to reload the device. Yeah, because now that you've saved your configuration, it will be there after a reload. By the way, don't do what I just did there, reload that device like that, if it's right in the middle of one of your busiest days of networking, right? I could have just caused a lot of help desk phone calls, couldn't I? By reloading that switch and not notifying users of that, sure enough, they're going to lose connectivity to the network suddenly and they'll be quite confused and upset with you. So don't reload your production equipment without the appropriate steps. But notice the point I was making we can safely reload with the reload command once we have confirmed that we have saved the configuration in RAM to the non-volatile RAM on the system. Any other commands that we should master from ICND1 materials? Well, yeah, I think it's pretty important to be able to see the startup configuration that you've saved on your device with show startup configuration. And finally, uh, one last switch port port security command. This would be how you would set the maximum number of IP addresses, excuse me, the maximum number of MAC addresses that can exist in our port security configuration for a port. One of the things that we're gonna do that students love as we move throughout these ICND2 materials is we are going to take a look at some review questions. That's right, questions like you might see them in the certification exam environment. Which commands configure 192.168.123/28 on fast ethernet 0/1? So we have to choose two that would configure that IP address and mask on fast ethernet zero slash one. Well, the first part of this is very, very easy, isn't it? It's what's the correct syntax to get into that interface. It's not interface config like we can see in the B option. It is simply interface fast ethernet zero slash one, isn't it? And then we have IP address 192.168.123 slash 28 and then IP address 192.168.123 and these different masks. Wow. So we have to do some review here on how we do our subnet masking. If it's a slash 28 mask, then we are using four bits for subnetting here in that fourth octet. So it's 128 plus 60, it's 192, and then 224, and then 240. So what we're looking for here is A and E as the correct responses. I want you in the audience to think about it, make sure that I'm right, and then we'll go ahead and we'll check our answer. Meanwhile, we have a question from Omar. Let's see what that's all about. In global configuration mode, changes are not live until we reload. 
Is that right? What a great question, Omar. Let's check it out. So in global config mode, are changes not live till we reload? Watch this, Omar. I think you're going to be surprised. Let's jump back over to our device. And we're going to go into global configuration mode. And in global configuration mode, I'm going to say host name SW1111111. When I hit enter, notice the name of the device changed. So, wow. Changes that we make in the config occur immediately. Changes that we make occur immediately in global configuration mode. Wow, we don't have to reload for them to take effect. By the way, before I forget, I better change the name of my switch back to normal. Yes, so we are going to see these changes right away. Sometimes, in some circumstances, changes aren't effective until you exit the mode. But that's more the exception than it is the rule. For the most part, 98% of what you would do in these devices takes effect right away. Actually, to be completely clear on this, it takes effect when you hit the carriage return. When you hit enter on the keyboard, that's when the change takes place. All right. Back. Uh, great question. Keep the questions coming, folks. Please. Great questions. And the mentors flag them for me when they think I should bring them up in class. And I would imagine with this smart group, I'm going to be bringing up questions a lot. Okay. So let's go ahead and uh, jump back to our review question. Were we right? Were those the two commands that would enable us to configure that on fast ethernet zero slash one? Oh, we got it right. Whew. A and E were indeed the correct responses. I love this question, not just because I wrote it and I did write it, but I love this question because it really gets back to, uh, it, it gets, it, it kills two birds with one stone to use that really bad expression. It helps us out with the, the subnetting and kind of re, it makes us know that and it makes us know how to configure an IP address. Oh, little error there. Let me just quickly figure out what's going on here, folks. One second. As I troubleshoot this real quick. Hmm. Oh, I know what I did wrong. Okay, we'll get right back into our questions and here we go. At least I think we will. All right, here we go. If something goes wrong, I can usually fix it pretty quick, thank goodness. So just bear with me. If I fumble with the technology, we'll be back up and running very quickly. What command allows the local password, command password, to be checked for Telnet access? What command allows the local password to be checked for Telnet access? Yeah, everybody's all over this one. We looked at this one a moment ago. To have the local password be checked, we use the login command. Yeah, let's make sure that's right. We're going to use the login command. Yeah, answer A is correct in order to have that local password be checked when we are uh, logging in to the device.